Normal mitochondrial function generates reactive oxygen species, ROS, including hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Now these reactive oxygen species then oxidatively damage protein, lipids, and nucleic acids, including DNA, and it can induce mitochondrial DNA mutations. The net effect of this damage and increased mutation load is mitochondrial dysfunction. Unfortunately, mitochondrial dysfunction then imposes a vicious cycle on this process, leading to the generation of more ROS, more damage and mutations, and further decreased mitochondrial function. Now, the sum of this process contributes to aging. And to highlight this, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction is one of the nine hallmarks of aging. So with this in mind, removing H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide is important for minimizing the vicious cycle. And notice I said removing uh, and actually removing the excess, not eliminating. It's impossible to completely eliminate reactive oxygen species as just as a byproduct of uh, oxygen-based metabolism, we're going to produce uh, superoxide, uh, which is a reactive oxygen species, which can be converted into H2O2. All right, so how is H2O2 degraded? Now, one mechanism for degrading it involves glutathione, as shown here, GSH. So two molecules of glutathione uh, are involved in the process that degrades H2O2 into water. And during that process, uh, GSH becomes itself oxidized, thereby forming one molecule of glutathione disulfide, GSSG. Now, this reaction, whereby H2O2 is degraded into water, is catalyzed by the enzyme glutathione peroxidase. And the activity of this enzyme depends upon the mineral selenium. So uh, if selenium intake is deficient, glutathione peroxidase will be suboptimal and hydrogen peroxide levels can accumulate. So with this in mind, uh, how much is optimal for selenium in terms of health? So the RDA, the recommended dietary allowance for selenium is 55 micrograms per day. And what's shown here is the RDA for selenium intake for various life stages, starting from infants all the way up through adults. And we can see that for adults, the recommendation is 55 micrograms per day for adults older than 19 years. Now, slightly higher amounts are, are proposed for pregnant and breastfeeding women, 60 and 70 micrograms per day, respectively. Now, these recommendations were derived based on the amount of selenium that maximizes glutathione peroxidase as an H2O2 degrading enzyme, uh, its activity. But selenium impacts more than just GPX or glutathione peroxidase activity. And that's what's shown here. So starting from dietary selenium intake, which influences circulating le levels of selenium, and then circulating levels of selenium uh, impact selenoproteins, so uh, proteins whose activity depends on the presence of selenium. And these proteins include not just glutathione peroxidase, but thyroidoxin redu uh, reductase, TRXR, uh, thyroid hormones that remove iodine groups, so diiodinases, DIO, and then uh, selenoprotein uh, P, and other selenium-dependent proteins, the collective uh, effect of these selenium-dependent proteins are involved in mechanisms that affect immune function, thyroid function, that protect against oxidative stress, and that influence inflammatory signaling pathways. And in sum, these selenium-dependent proteins are involved in mechanisms that reduce all-cause mortality risk. So with that in mind, and we're considering that the RDA for, uh, for selenium was only based on glutathione peroxidase activity, uh, is 55 micrograms per day, optimal for health. So let's have a look at the data. So here we see uh, all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis plotted against uh, dietary selenium intake on the x-axis. And this is in a study of about 18,000 people. And what we can see is that the lowest all-cause mortality risk was present when the dietary selenium intake was 125 micrograms per day, which already were higher than that 55 microgram per day RDA recommendation. Now, studies, data from other studies relating dietary or circulating levels of selenium with all-cause mortality risk, ACM, supports the hypothesis that 55 micrograms per day of selenium is not optimal. So let's look at that data. So again, in this study of about 19,000 people, the group that uh, uh, averaged uh, 71 micrograms of selenium per day had the highest all-cause mortality risk. And groups that had higher levels of selenium intake 100 and 126 micrograms per day had lower all-cause mortality risk, and the group that had the lowest all-cause mortality risk uh, uh, averaged an, a selenium intake of 183 micrograms per day. Now, dietary studies are, are interesting, but they can um, suffer from uh, under-reporting or over-reporting as people have to remember what they ate and how much of it. In contrast, circulating levels of selenium are a more objective measure of selenium intake because it, 
you know, people can say what they ate or what they didn't, but what's in the blood is directly related to how much they ate, how much selenium uh, they, they took in, as we'll see in, in a little bit. So uh, what about the data for circulating levels of selenium with all-cause mortality risk? And that's what we can see here. Again, all-cause mortality risk on the y-axis plotted against the circulating selenium concentration on the x-axis. And this is a meta-analysis of six studies with uh, about 21,000 subjects. And what we can see is that the lowest all-cause mortality risk was present when the circulating selenium concentration was 1.3 micromoles per liter. Now, if we're going to convert this into a, a, a form that can uh, be correlated with the uh, a dietary selenium intake, we need to convert this first into micrograms per liter. So one mole of selenium is 79 grams, and when you multiply 1.3 micromoles per liter times 79 grams per mole, we get 103 micrograms per liter. So with that in mind, what level of dietary selenium is correlated with 103 micrograms per liter of selenium in blood? And that's what we can derive here. So here we're looking at the correlation between serum selenium on the y-axis versus the dietary selenium intake on the x-axis in micrograms per day. And what we can see is first that the higher the selenium intake, the higher uh, that was correlated with a higher circulating level of selenium. All right, so then the big question is what does 103 uh, micrograms per liter in the previous meta-analysis data, what does that correlate to in terms of dietary intake? And based on extrapolation based on the trend line, we can see that that uh, amount, 103 micrograms per liter, cor corresponds to 166 micrograms of selenium per day. Now note that these data for the circulating uh, levels of selenium that were associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk are within that range uh, that was uh, identified in the dietary studies. So 125 to 183 micrograms per day in the dietary studies, 166 micrograms per day of selenium for the uh, circulating uh, selenium all-cause mortality study. So then that also raises the question, is there an upper limit? So this is data from a five-year randomized controlled trial, RCT, where people were supplemented with a placebo, 100, 200, or 300 micrograms per day of selenium. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, this, was, this study was done for five years, so people got these supplements for five years. So first, obviously, the baseline mortality data, we can see they're obviously starting from the, the same risk of death from all, from all, for all causes. And then at the end of the five-year period, when looking at the brown line, the 300 micrograms per day of selenium group, we can see that there was some separation when compared with uh, both the, all three of the other groups, including the placebo, but that data wasn't uh, statistically significant. However, they followed these subjects for an additional 10 years after the five-year study. So now it's a 15-year study. And we can see that the group that had 300 micrograms that was uh, uh, consuming, that was supplemented with 300 micrograms per day of selenium, now had a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk when compared with placebo. So the authors of this study rationalized that selenium toxicity may have been induced because of the 300 microgram per day dose within the first five years, and then that persisted for 10 years after the study concluded. Uh, so uh, these data collectively uh, suggest that 200 micrograms per day of selenium may be an upper limit, but definitely, or at least not 300 micrograms per day, as there may be some increased all-cause mortality risk with that, associated with that. So with this in mind, what's my data? Now, I've been tracking my diet, uh, uh, including weighing all my food and uh, logging all of the macro and micronutrients into an Excel file since 2015. I've also been blood testing a lot since then. So I have up to 30 blood tests that correspond to dietary intake over the past six years. And when I look for correlations between my selenium intake with um, biomarkers, you know, blood-based biomarkers that are found, found on the standard chemistry panel uh, and uh, uh, CBC, the complete blood count, and also things like homocysteine, C-reactive protein, and lipoprotein A, uh, I, we, we can see that uh, when my selenium intake is higher than 200 micrograms per day, it's correlated with many biomarkers going in the wrong direction. So I'm just going to illustrate a few of them uh, here. So first, uric acid versus my average daily selenium intake. Uh, we can see that the higher my average daily selenium intake, the higher my uric acid level. Uh, so what about this 200 microgram cutoff? So we can see that as my selenium intake goes past that 200 microgram cutoff, uric acid is uh, increasing. And note that this is a significant correlation based on the p-value. Now, I haven't made a video about this yet, but higher levels of uh, uric acid are found during aging. They increase during aging. And there's a U-shaped association with all-cause mortality risk. So very low levels, of which my data is not in that range, 
but also higher, relatively higher levels are associated with an increased uh, all-cause mortality risk. So with the higher selenium intake, that's cor correlated with uric acid going in the wrong direction. And I'll link to those studies for uric acid in the uh, video's description if you're interested. Now, other biomarkers also are going in the wrong direction with higher selenium intakes, greater than 200 micrograms per day. And that's what we can see here. So when I put the black line up right at that 200 microgram uh, cutoff, uh, we can see that my RDW, so red blood cell distribution width, is, uh, cor uh, it's correlated with an increase um, for a, the higher selenium intake. Now, uh, I have a video on this too, and for the other, next two or three biomarkers, if you're interested in, that, uh, in that, the, the data for how they change during aging and all-cause mortality risk, I'll put them in the right corner so you can uh, check those out. But for this, RDW is going in the wrong direction. We, your, lower values are found in youth and are associated with a, a lower all-cause mortality risk. So with this, it looks like the higher my selenium intake past 200 micrograms per day, that's correlated with RDW going in the wrong direction. Similarly for HDL, which is shown here. So as we get past, as we get to that 200 microgram cutoff, we can see that that's correlated with lower HDL. And I, as I mentioned, I have a video on HDL. Values uh, in the 50 to 60 range are uh, proposed to be optimal for men. So uh, actually, that that the as I go towards 170 or so for selenium, that seems to be correlated with relatively higher HDL. Whereas as I get past 200, it's going in the wrong direction towards lower HDL. Now I didn't put up. Uh, uh, any pictures for this, but also alkaline phosphatase. We see a, po a positive correlation, which means that the higher the selenium intake, that's correlated with a higher alkaline phosphatase, uh, which is also going in the wrong direction because higher al uh, alkaline phosphatase increases during aging and higher levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So I've got four biomarkers that suggest higher uh, selenium intakes higher than 200 micrograms per day may be bad for health. Now, interestingly, there's one that seems to be going in the right direction, and that's glucose. So as we can see, as my selenium intake gets past about 200 micrograms per day, my glucose levels are going down or correlated with going down. And glucose increases during aging, and higher levels of glucose are associated with an increased more all-cause mortality risk. So this, was, uh, this data would suggest that higher selenium it may be uh, sending glucose in the right direction by whatever the mechanism. So I didn't only look at these five biomarkers. I also compared... Uh, the um, other these other biomarkers that I've listed here, 23 other biomarkers. Um, most of them I have up to 30 blood tests, but some of them I have less. Uh, 14 data points, including uh, C, C reactive protein, homocysteine, lipoprotein A. Uh, but note that none of the, these 23 biomarkers were significantly correlated with my selenium intake. So, um, so then this, when considering that I've got data for four biomarkers going in the wrong direction and one going in the right direction, and no effect on 23 then that's a net minus three. So it seems like the very high levels of selenium, at least past 200 micrograms in my data, may not be optimal for health. So uh, last but not least, uh, and many of you may already know this, which foods are selenium rich? So Brazil nuts are the uh, best source of selenium. Um, one gram of Brazil nuts contains about uh, 19 micrograms. Uh, so with that in mind, I eat uh, one large Brazil nut, about five grams per day, which gets me about 96 micrograms per day from Brazil nuts. Uh, so that's about half of my current intake. And then I also get a significant amount of daily selenium from sardines, as I eat sardines every day, 80 grams, one tin. Uh, so I get 40 micrograms of selenium uh, from that. So between those two foods, I get about 70% of my daily selenium, about 180 to 190 micrograms per day to stay under that 200 microgram limit um, in my intake. All right, that's all I've got for now. If you made it to the end, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, got value from it. Uh, have a great day.